So the US government is pushing like mad for the electrification of everything. So what that means for the AC and heating industry is the government is wanting to get rid of gas furnaces and replace them with heat pumps. Some states are outright banning gas furnaces, but for most folks, the government is simply offering a tax credit to switch over. So is it really worth moving away from a gas furnace over to a heat pump? And is one better than the other? Well, let's find out. Hi, this is Kenneth with Atlas AC. And at any point during this video, if you find it to be helpful, please hit the like button and that will really help me out with the YouTube algorithms. So throughout this video, we're going to be comparing three different HVAC systems. So the first being a traditional gas furnace, and then after that, a heat pump, and lastly, a dual fuel setup. So we're going to compare the differences on how these systems operate, along with indoor climate control, does it make financial sense, and what is the life expectancy of the equipment, and lastly, what I would do. So a complete gas system setup is fairly straightforward. There are three major pieces of equipment that goes into it. You have your gas furnace for heating, and for cooling, you have a condenser and evaporator coil. And when the system is operating in cooling mode, the only component that is being used in the furnace is the blower. However, in heating mode, only the furnace is being used. The condenser and evaporator coil has nothing to do with heating, only cooling. And now for a heat pump, we end up with two major pieces of equipment. The first being the heat pump itself, or the condenser, and the second being the air handler. And in this setup, it can both heat and cool, depending on which direction the refrigerant is flowing. So in the wintertime, you can see that the heat pump is discharging cold air directly into the outdoor climate. So the big problem occurs is when the outdoor temperatures get below freezing. It can create frost on the unit or ice up, or it can no longer heat properly. Now, depending on the severity, a lot of times it can overcome this by going into defrost mode, which is turning itself back into cooling mode or back into an air conditioner. So it would essentially be air conditioning your house for about five minutes, and it would melt all the frost off the outdoor unit, then it would switch itself back into heating mode. So this is why the emergency heat kit is important in this setup. So in this process, it's going to turn on and keep everybody from freezing out. Or if your outdoor unit ends up turning into a complete block of ice, you can use emergency heat as a backup source to heat your home. Now if we move over to a dual fuel setup, you can see that it looks very familiar to the gas setup that we were looking at earlier. So the major difference in equipment in a dual fuel setup is that it's not using a straight coil condenser, but a heat pump. So in a traditional heat pump system, it uses electric heaters for its emergency heat. However, in a dual fuel system, it uses the furnace for emergency heat. Now that that's out of the way, we can ask the question of which one of these systems provides the highest quality of heating. So in a heat pump, when the refrigerant is cycling through the evaporator coils, it can reach temperatures upwards of 140 degrees. So when the indoor return air passes over the 140 degree coil, it's going to absorb a lot of that heat. Now moving over to a gas furnace, it is using combustion in order to heat your home. So these heat exchangers here can reach upwards to 350 degrees which the return air will pass over it and absorb that heat. So we can clearly see that a gas system gets quite a bit hotter than a heat pump. Because of this, it has a tendency to make the warm air have a more crisp feel. So on a cold rainy day, a heat pump might end up feeling a little clammy inside, especially if you have a basic system. However, with a gas furnace, it's gonna be nice and crisp. Now there are a few caveats in that statement, but at the end of the day, you get the gist. So I wanna take a second and point out an interesting feature that's commonly overlooked whenever we compare the two system types. So let's go back to February of 2021 when we were experiencing snowmageddon here in Texas. So I was out of power and water for three days, which unfortunately also happened to many Texans. So I ended up getting lucky and probably fared better than most. And that's because we had some relatives in the medical district and we knew that the utility companies would be prioritizing the hospitals. So that's where we ended up weathering the storm. So ERCOT was saying that there's a chance that our whole grid might go down. So we were trying to make plans if that event did occur. We did have a small generator there, but it wasn't hooked up to anything. And my relatives were concerned that we would only be able to use it for the lights. And we wouldn't be able to do anything with the heat. And I told them it's going to end up not being an issue. Because I'd get my happy butt up in the attic and wire the furnace to the generator. And the furnace runs on 110 volts. And the only power consumption of the furnace is coming from the blower. So it ends up not drawing that much power. So a small generator can easily power a furnace. Now that we had plan B in place, we could all sleep a little bit easier. And the reason why I couldn't do this at my house is because we had a heat pump. And it operates off a of 208 voltage. And the emergency heat kits were 15 kW. Meaning it's going to take a substantial amount of juice to power it. And a small generator simply couldn't make the cut. Hopefully this was a once in a lifetime event. I'm just trying to point out that a furnace or dual fuel setup could come in handy if there's power outages. Now let's jump over to the question of, does converting to a heat pump make financial sense? So let's start off with looking at how much it's going to cost to install each one of these systems. So the scenario here is, you currently have an 80% gas furnace with four tons of cooling, 
And we're going back with a single stage 15.2 sear heat pump along with an 80% furnace for the gas and dual fuel changeouts. So in this chart here, you can see that I have a cost to change out the system, the cost to convert a furnace to a heat pump or dual fuel system, along with the all-in cost. Keep in mind, this is a perfect case scenario where we're assuming that the duct works good and there are no modifications needed. We're simply just changing out the equipment. And the last disclaimer here to note is the pricing that you see here is for 410A equipment and the new R454B equipment is about to come out and it will cost a little bit more. So you might want to end up referencing our website for current pricing. So you can see here the cost to change out a gas system is $9,014. There's no modifications needed because it ended up being a like for like system. So the cost to change out a heat pump system is $8,949. However, there are some modifications that need to be done in order to convert a gas system to a heat pump. The first and most costly thing that needs to be done is running electrical. And the rule of thumb is that's going to cost about $2,000. And the reason for this is the furnace that you currently have is running off of 120 volts. However, in order to power the emergency heat kits, you need 208 voltage. Thus, you're going to need to add a couple breakers at the panel and run new electrical wiring to the indoor unit. And the other $500 would be contributed to running things like low voltage wire, capping the flue pipe along with a couple odds and ends like that. And for a dual fuel system, it's going to run around $9,581. So if we take a look at the cost to convert, we can see that it's about $2,000 cheaper. And the reason for this is we no longer need an electrician. Because we're going back with a furnace and it doesn't need 208 voltage, so your existing electrical should be good enough. And for the $500, it's going to be for the exact same miscellaneous stuff that I mentioned earlier. So a total all-in cost for a gas system is $9,414. And to convert it to a heat pump, it's going to run around $11,449. And to convert it over to dual fuel, it's going to run about $10,081. So the lowest upfront cost is a gas furnace. Then after that is a dual fuel system. And from there is a heat pump with an air handler. So now we got a good idea of what the upfront costs are going to look like, along with which system is the cheapest and which system is the most expensive. However, will the energy savings that you get from a heat pump offset the extra cash that you're having to shell out? So heat pumps are more energy efficient than gas systems and should be able to save you three to $500 in energy costs each year. So to convert a gas system to a heat pump, it's gonna cost roughly $2,000 more than a light for light gas system. So the question is, is how many years of savings do you need to pay that back? And for the dual fuel solution, it's around $660 more. And how many years is that gonna take? So here I'm showing the overall savings over the course of the HVAC system's life. So in the first column here, I'm showing years 1 through 15, and the second column is representing a heat pump, our initial cost of $11,449, and underneath the savings being applied to that top line number. From there, we got the dual fuel configuration, its initial cost of $10,081, and each year of savings underneath it. And the next column over, I have energy savings. And for this example, we're going to say converting to a heat pump is going to save $400 annually. So you can see that the upfront cost for a heat pump is $11,449. After the first winter, you're going to save $400 in heating cost. Now lowering your initial investment to $11,049. Now keep in mind, if you went with a traditional gas system, you would have paid $9,414. So the increased cost to convert a gas system to a heat pump could be offset in savings by year five. And everything after that is pure savings. So now if we go over to the dual fuel solution, the initial cost was $10,081. After the first year, that drops to $9,681. And by year two, it pays for itself. And years two through 15 is pure savings. So by converting over from a gas system to a heat pump, by year 15, you're going to have a total savings of around $4,000 in heating cost alone. And for dual fuel, it's going to be closer to $5,000. So there's one big component that I did not include in the savings chart which is the federal tax credit. So the federal tax credit for qualified heat pump systems offers around $2,000 in tax credits. So in tax season, you will need to work with your CPA to claim those tax credits. So you always wanna double check to make sure that the equipment qualifies for a federal tax credit, because in this example, the heat pump does qualify. However, the dual fuel system does not qualify. We would have had to upgrade to a more energy efficient system in order for the dual fuel to qualify. So I'm only going to be applying the $2,000 tax credit to the heat pump. And by doing that, the cost to convert to a heat pump pays for itself the very first year. And now bumps up to close to $6,000 in heating savings over the course of its life. And please keep in mind that I'm not including any energy savings that is coming from a higher seared system. This is simply energy savings from the heating side along with the $2,000 tax credit. So the next thing that we're gonna look at is what is the life expectancy differences in between these systems? So when it comes to a gas system, when it heats, the furnace is the only thing that runs. 
and the outdoor unit stays off. However, when it comes to a heat pump, it both heats and cools, so that means it runs year-round. So it ends up wearing out a little bit faster. So you should be able to get a couple more useful years out of a gas system over a heat pump. However, many people justify that because of the energy savings. So what's my summary and conclusion from comparing a gas system to a heat pump to a dual fuel? So now if we go over to our handy dandy rating chart, you can see that I got furnace in this column, after that is heat pump, and then dual fuel. On the column on the left, we have our categories that we're going to rate on. First being how the systems handle the cold, then after that, indoor comfort, from there, upfront cost, then savings, and lastly, longevity. I threw in Snowmageddon here, but it's not going to tie into the final ratings, because hopefully that's a once-in-a-lifetime event. So when it comes to the dual fuel setup, please keep in mind that the ratings that I have here are more based on how I would use it. So I'd use the furnace and the heat pump to their own strengths, versus only using the furnace for emergency heat. So the first thing that we're going to be comparing is how does it handle freezing temperatures. So when it comes to handling freezing temperatures, the furnace is going to be able to handle almost anything that's thrown at it. In freezing temperatures, the heat pump is going to struggle some. It might have to cycle back and forth some from heat mode to defrost mode, which is not ideal for heating. And in some cases, you might have to solely rely on the emergency heat kits because the condenser could have frozen up. Now for a dual fuel system, the way that I would use it is the moment that it got to freezing, I would just switch it over to the emergency heat and let the furnace do its thing. The outdoor unit would cut off and only the furnace would run. Once it got back above 32 degrees, I would then take it off of emergency heat and move the heating back over to the heat pump. Now for the indoor comfort, my belief is gas systems provide the highest quality of heating because the heat exchangers get hot enough to bake the air and it leaves you with that crisp feeling in the air. However, you're not going to get that from a heat pump and on a dual fuel system, if it was starting to feel clammy inside, I would go ahead and crank up the furnace and crisp up the air. Now for upfront cost, the furnace is going to be the cheapest, the heat pump is going to be the most expensive, and the dual fuel is going to be in between. So obviously there's going to be little savings and no savings if you're changing out a furnace for a furnace, especially if they're both 80 percenters. However, by using a heat pump, you're going to generate quite a bit of savings. And for the dual fuel setup, I do have a slightly lower rating than the heat pump, and that's because I'm going to be using the furnace periodically. So when it comes to the longevity of the equipment, the furnace is going to have the longest life expectancy. However, the heat pump and dual fuel options are going to end up being slightly shorter. And when it comes to snowmageddon or power outages, a furnace or dual fuel option can be hooked up to a small generator and keep on trucking. However, you're just out of luck when it comes to a heat pump. So we can see here that the furnace performs better in almost all categories, except for savings. At the end of 15 years, you're going to spend a lot more money in the energy cost over a heat pump or dual fuel option. And you can see that the heat pump doesn't perform as well in almost all categories, except for savings. Over the course of 15 years, you're going to save a lot of money. And here I got the dual fuel setup, which ends up kind of giving you the best of both worlds. So the furnace ends up with four and a half stars, the heat pump with three and a half stars, and the dual fuel with four and a half stars. So which one would I go with for my house? Well, it depends. So if I was in a position where I was strapped for cash, which we've all been there before, then I'd probably go with the most inexpensive system, which is the furnace. Also, if I own multiple rental properties, I think that there might be a cap on the amount of tax credit that one individual can claim in a year. So if you end up having to replace multiple HVAC systems in a year, you might want to check with your CPA before converting a bunch of stuff to heat pumps. And if that ends up being the case, then the cheapest option might be the best choice, which is going back like for like with a furnace. And the other reason you might want to go back with a furnace is if you absolutely love the quality of heat that you get from it. Now, if I was looking to maximize my savings, I would definitely go with a heat pump. At the end of the day, it's going to save you the most amount of money. Now, if you have old gas piping and you're worried that you're going to have to replace it soon, and you don't want to spend a huge amount of money doing that, I would definitely go with a heat pump. Now when it comes to the dual fuel option, it is personally my favorite. And that's because you get the savings component, the tax credit if you get a higher end system. It works in really low temperatures. And if you have a generator, it can work in events like Snowmageddon. At the end of the day, it just ends up being a whole lot more versatile over the other two systems. If you found this video to be helpful, please hit the like button. We also have free buyer's guides and price lists on our website that you might want to check out. Until next time, have a good one.